it doesn't take but a click and a few fingers that you can participate. And we said before, we gave a talk before about social interaction. If this dunya and dajjal is teaching that your social status and your social media accounts will be something that all this dajjal system will be tracking, that's just a drop of an understanding from Divinely Presence. That all of Divinely Presence is that to make yourself to be counted. Don't hide your faith, don't hide your participation, all you should be doing is hiding your bad character. But unfortunately everybody wants to let their bad character to show and hide all the goodness. So the turuqs are coming and teaching to us, no, no, let yourself to be known that you are participating, that you are watching, that you are appreciating, that you're interacting and that your social media and the the attention that you get from Prophet is to be known, to be identified that, I am here, that we are here and this is the light and the love that we believe and we are going to spread that light and that love inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shahad Ya Rasulullah. I mean inshaAllah you guys have Salatul Maghrib but it's early. No? You don't have any questions out there? Um, you have about 10, 15 minutes, huh? 20 minutes till Maghrib. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can you please guide us how to remove the fear of negative energy and visuals from our heart, especially during meditation? Yeah, the <coughs> visual we think, I think we talked about in, in the talks of the khalwa. Shaitan plays with the mind and he has access to the minds of people. So the scariest images that they have in their mind, he's able to activate that image and put fear into the heart of a person. So when they go to meditate or contemplate or isolate themselves, that's shaitan's job and through his minions of jinn and all the different creatures that he's working with, they merely come near a person and begin to activate all of the memory cards within their head. So that the images come, the fear comes, these scary movie thoughts come. So that the person will be scared, frightened and stop their meditation. And that's why the zikrs and the guided meditation on how the tariqahs are teaching us is to combat all of that. That's why you're not told just sit down, close your eyes and just start breathing because we know that your ears and your eyes have to have a, a focus point. That's why the tariqah comes and teaches you know first make your connection with the shaykh Visualize the shaykh is in front of you so that your focus and your heart is always focusing on the presence of the shaykh. Because as shaitan comes to put fear into your heart, you have to have control within your heart to control the image. That when he makes it into a scary image you bring your heart back to say, no I'm visualizing the presence of my shaykh, my shaykh is in front of me and nothing can be harming me. And then that becomes the great battle in which shaitan tries to throw the image in your head and the strength within your heart to put back the image that, no it's the presence of my shaykh that's in front of me. And that becomes the struggle and the practice on how to gain control over your head. Because shaitan is, is fighting for the control over your head, to rule the head, to rule the body. And turuqs are coming that, no your heart has to rule. So the strength and faith within your heart has to bring the image of the shaykh, the image of the Kaaba, image of the, that which is holy and to control that and take away the fear. The fear that comes is, is going to be the fight against faith. So when my faith is strong and it's trying to be stronger then I'm with the shaykhs, I'm with the love of Prophet I fear not because Allah is with me. 
So that becomes then the battle, oh, what's going to happen, Who, how anything going to hurt you? Just keep making your connection, keep making the practices, keep, keep believing that Allah is protecting you and, and don't worry that shaitan is trying to distract you or pull you with images to make you to stop the tafakkur and stop the contemplation inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is my understanding incorrect that men don't wear gold? Is your understanding correct that men don't wear gold? It could be correct, yes. <laughs> that Prophet described that not to wear gold as was done in previous communities and nations because each metal has a, an energy and the effect of that energy on men and women is going to be something different. So the energy of gold has a different effect on, on, on the male and the masculine identity of a man as well as other fabrics like silk. So these are all advanced energy teachings that Prophet brought for his community. So at that time they may not have discussed it in that way but in this day and age they know that every metal has an interaction with the body. So when they have iron it's a strong energy against very negative forces because when insan carries iron the jinn can see that and that iron ignites with the believer's heart and produces a light that scares them. So in many days they would have iron, iron armory and, and everything from iron. So the different metals have a different reaction for insan and, and, and different healing qualities. Silver has a healing quality upon insan. So when they drink from silver and wear silver it has a healing onto the body and in, in, it magnifies the body's ability to heal and to produce an energy for healing. So these are all a part of these energy understandings inshaAllah. Mm. As, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. I have a question about negative energy. What do you do when you visit a place and feel a negative energy? How can we protect ourselves at that moment? That always, always wherever we go try to keep yourself always in wudu. Try to keep yourself always with your taweez and all of the, the armament that has been given and taught that you keep yourself always in wudu, keep yourself always in salatul wudu that after you made wudu you pray two rakah salah and that you're sealed and that you have your taweez and you have your tasbih in your pocket. And if you go somewhere with an immensely negative force that imad, that one you have to move out of that energy because something is telling you that it's not right there. And then in your heart to make your salawats and your zikr and your madad inshaAllah to protect you from anything that's sort of nefarious. But there's a difference that the tariq is always teaching is that you have to be in a constant state of wudu. For some reason uh, many people only have wudu before they make salah and tariqah is completely is not something like that at all. The believer must be in a state of wudu at all times and as soon as they lose their wudu they must go back and quickly regain it because they're dealing with uh, immense amounts of energies and all of these spiritual practices. It's not enough that you just make wudu before salah. Because all your life is about this energy, you're, you're praying, you're, you're, you're meditating, you're contemplating, you're asking for madad, you're asking for support. So then we have to be in a continuous state of wudu so that you're always sealed with this energy and that you don't come under attack and you're, you don't have uh, difficulties and, and sicknesses inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa How can one protect himself from family members who smoke electric cigarettes in the house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the cold smoke is more dangerous than the hot smoke. That, that was just shaitan's way of, of playing with the kids and, and creating an immense difficulty. The nicotine that he's trying to put inside of insan is a poison for their 
lungs and for their energy. And with the hot smoke was very difficult because they could only breathe so deep because of the heat of the smoke. So then in his cleverness he came with the cold smoke. And the cold actually goes deeper into the lungs and begins to crystallize on the lungs. All we have to understand is from the breathing teachings and the breathing meditation there's a fight against the lungs of insan. And in the last days that is the battleground, that is the tree of life. So as insan and humans are running to get to the tree of life, to grab the tree of life is the tree of power. If they can reach to that tree, hold on to the tree, nafas al rahma means Allah's qudra and power begins to dress their breath. That's why we've talked about the breath. When Allah dresses the breath of these shaykhs they have an immense power on their soul. And when Allah wants to turn the volume up He just keeps sending more power onto their breath until they're heating up and their soul comes out and many, many miraculous things can happen just with their breath and the power of their soul. That's all related to the breath. So if they can reach to this tree of life which is the, the bronchial tree, the tree of the lungs they reached Allah's power. So then what shaitan now is trying to do? Every sickness and disease is going after those lungs. So whether he put a smoke on them, a hot smoke on them, cold smoke on them, put on pandemic, pandemic upon them, everything is going for those lungs. If he should take the lungs they can't reach to nafas al qudra. So they, they can't reach to any barakah and any blessings, everything would be of a superficial reality for them. But the inner truth and inner power is in their breath and the connection with their breath and the qudra that Allah dressing their breath with from Divine the Presence. So that is the battleground right now for everyone. That's why you see all these sicknesses that are coming out are based on the breath and breathing and the lungs. InshaAllah save us and protect us from these difficulties. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Thank you for your guidance. I would just like to say ever since we gave a gift to Muhammadan Way, my children have started to do their religious practices without my asking them. Thank you. MashaAllah, Allah bless you and bless your family and alhamdulillah. This is the, the way that uh, was taught to us by awliyaullah that our life is, is to be of service and to participate. That everybody now wants to be a, a shareholder of a, of a big company and the best companies are heavenly companies in which they represent the malakut and the eternal world of Allah in which everything is a perpetual return for them. Everything that is given in that way reaches to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and the mission in which Prophet has dispersed upon this earth. So has immense blessings not only for the physical life on, on this earth but for the immense realities of the hereafter. That imagine in the association when you take your last breath only at that time you'll know what your participation was and how it would be rewarded by Allah in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can we compete in our nothingness as described in yesterday's sohbah? Yeah, the, the greatest competition in nothingness is to have good character. That to make and what we are competing with is that Prophet to be happy with us. That you'll see that somebody gets insulted and, and somebody gets yelled at and, and somebody does this. All of those depending upon how the reaction of the character of the person tells you how much Prophet is happy with them. So that, that's our competition that when you stay quiet through difficulty, stay quiet through bad characteristics, stay quiet through backbiting and all of the horribleness of dunya that occurs for people, the ones whom their ranks are very high are the ones who remain silent and they stayed and kept their ship moving in the direction that Allah wanted for them to move. 
So our competition is with good characteristics, that's what we said, then as much as you can negate the self and, and take away the self, you become the reflection of that reality and to reflect the Muhammadan reality in which that hadith has an immense reality. So the ones whom are competing, competing and cleaning, especially the shaykhs the most because when they clean themselves and they compete in that cleanliness their servants benefit from the uloom and the knowledges that are reflecting. Means that when they perfect their hearing and their conscious state of understanding, the depth in which they hear the reality in the Muhammadan heart then everybody benefits. So then the depth of what they cleansed from their mouth is then the fruits of the talks that are emitting from their tongue. So that's the whole purpose is on controlling and taming all the bad characteristics so they can go deep within the Muhammadan reality and that Prophet reflects out those blessings upon their ears, their eyes, their hands, their feet, their entire wujud is walking roses from the garden of Muhammadun Rasulullah inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What's your advice on protecting ourselves from those who do black magic and affect our prayer routine and messes up with our lives? Sometimes I feel like I'm weak against it. Yeah, we have many talks on that, don't focus on anything to do with black magic. That if you focus on the meditation, focus on the muraqabah, focus on the good character, focus on how to make your connection, there's no magic that can stand up in the presence of Allah it's all created from Allah. There's no magic that can stand up in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad all qudra and power flows through Sayyidina Muhammad And if you're doing your muraqabah and connecting with the shaykhs and keeping yourself in the presence and in the nazar of the shaykhs, then what is uh, there to fear? So then that concept of fearing something then is a deficiency in making the, the right connection with the exact practices that they've described. So people who have had magic put upon them that they went and in their lives they did something, they went through the jungles, they dealt with shamans and people put something on them, that's something else. That's the burden of your past that you're responsible for cleaning. But those who have done nothing but they just have a fear that people are doing magic upon them, that's, that's not the, the correct understanding. Focus on the solution and not on the problem. Focus on making the meditation, the connections, lots of salawats, lots of uh, connection with the shaykhs, lots of associations and alhamdulillah nothing, nothing should be able to come near except minor inconveniences inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam, I thought you didn't have any questions, it just keeps keep going alhamdulillah, that's good. <laughs> Can we burn sage and Palo Santo wood? to cleanse our home spiritually and physically? Yeah that, that has to do with those things of mixing up other things. So we have our, our own fragrances that are to be burned and shouldn't mix with other understandings and other beliefs because they, they, have, a, they have a different energy that they're summonsing with these things. So for us cleansing is isfan wild ruh seed. So you cleanse a space with isfan, you cleanse a space with oud and the, the known Islamic fragrances for cleansing and for, for taking away difficulty. Isfan is one of the more powerful ones, wild ruh seed and oud. If you burn the, the oud and takes away all the negative energies this is sufficient. You start burning up other things, it's like a, every fragrance calls something. So these naturalists and new age people they burn sage and, and all of like Italian spices, marjoram, sage and all these things but what ends up happening is they're calling many wild spirits into the room thinking that these are cleansings but they're not cleansings, these are calling different energies into the environment and into the room. The ones that are Islamic are very powerful because 
the mu'min jinn they like this smell and the non-mu'min jinn are very fearful of the smells and they battle to go away from that smell. So those are the important ones. And again tea tree oil with water, as soon as you mix tea tree oil with water and just spray in different areas where you feel the energy is not correct or something is, is moving onto your feet eat and you can spray even your feet with tea tree oil and water for cleansing and for cleaning of bad energy inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basir Surat al-Fatiha.